the Raider of the Monies. Hey coders, the Money Raider here. Today we're going to be doing episode two of Data Pack Tools. In this episode, we're going to be exploring a menu system that has many practical applications. It is one I'm currently implementing into Final Frontier. And without further ado, let's hop right into it. Okay, let's get on with the demonstration. So you want a block of netherite, an item frame, and place another star on top of that, and you get your own menu tablet. So if we click on this, right click on it, you get a little custom menu here. You can't actually place anything here. It just gives it back to you. And you can, so let's start with summoning Wither Skeleton five blocks away. You can detect me clicking that. You can also bounce mobs up. Like that. In here, potion effects, if we click that, it sends us to a different page. And you have jump boost for 10 seconds, regeneration for 10 seconds, and resistance for 10 seconds. Click this go back. This kills all mobs, so if we summon in some Wither Skeletons, just kill all mobs that way. And then if we can also click this, it teleports us to zero, zero, just like that. Now for the visualization. The power behind the menu system is for its ability to detect which slot is being clicked and react appro appropriately. First, it says, hey, in the player's inventory, is there an item with the tag of filler 1B, or is there a filler 1B on the ground somewhere in the world? Then, it executes for every one of the 27 slots of the invisible minecart and says, hey, is there an item with filler 1B? If there isn't, then it adds the tag of replace followed by the number of the slot. Then if that has that tag, it's going to summon an item, just a blank temporary item. Then, if it also has a tag, it's going to modify the item from the specific slot. So if you place an item in the visible of my cart replacing like a filler item, then it will set that item to the temporary item. Then it clears all the filler 1B items from the ground and from the player. Then it clears all the temp temporary items, so it kills them because sometimes the player will just pick up a filler item instead of clicking with another item. Then, based off of the tags, you can detect which slot was clicked and run commands like changing the page value or doing things like summoning wither skeletons. Then you set the items for the page. So for the first page, you want to set all the specific items of the slime block, the honey bottle, and etc. And then lastly, if it has a different page value, which it might based off the commands of the tag, then it's going to run the directory to choose which function to set as the page again. So then that updates the page and sets it to the items for the new page. Perceptive viewers may have noticed that there's this shadow following me around whenever I'm holding the menu tablet. This is due to an invisible minecart that acts as the menu system. But how is this possible, you may ask? Does that mean all minecarts are invisible? Well, no. Behind me, you can see every minecart clearly visible. This is due to a Discord member of the Minecraft Commands Discord, Ms. Sode. He created a lovely post a while ago that details how to make invisible minecarts. The method it uses is making all minecarts invisible, and the ones that don't have the tag of invisible minecart have a special conditional command block used as their block state that recreates the model. So these are not actually the original models, but they are duplicates. If you're wondering how I added the creation of the menu tablet, it was fairly simple. It sim I simply detected if there was a item frame with another star in it, and if the, there was another right block underneath it, I summoned the item, I did the portal effect, I created the sound effect, I filled it, the netherite with air, and then I killed the netherite block, I then killed the item frame. 
It's very similar to Custom Crafting Episode 1. To start off the explanation, I'm going to show you a item tag file. In this, this holds all of the items that can be used in the menu system. If you try to introduce an item as part of a menu page that's not in this item tag file, then it will be able to be t taken out and duplicated and all sorts of things. So as long as the item is in here, it can be used as part of the menu system. Let's start in the main function. Because this is Datapack Tools 2, you have the function for the main time freeze and the function for the main menu. I've hashtagged this out because I want to concentrate on the main menu. If we go to main menu in here, it has execute as all minecart types, which is another, it's an entity type tag that's in the data pack in the Minecraft folder. And as long as they don't have the tag of invisible Minecraft, minecart, it's going to run this function. Now if we go to this function right here, all it does is it merges it based off of what type of minecart it is to a command block that has some properties and this with the resource pack makes them have their custom models that makes them look normal. Then it adds invisible minecart. Next it's going to do the main of the menu system. These are all labeled PND and all the tags are PND due to the fact that PND is the original way I made the menu system in Final Frontier. Before I get too far, I want to show all the scoreboard objectives needed. You have page for which page of the menu you're on, refill for, well, refilling the page, and then X1, Y1, X2, Y2, then six positioning dummy scores. These are all for checking if the player is moving around or looking around to set the page back to the first page. Now this function is fairly simple. Basically it goes to all the menus, the, the actual chess minecarts, not the players, and it checks, hey, is the nearest player having a filler one be in the inventory? That means have they clicked on the item and it's in that in-between state where you're moving around, or is it actually in their inventory if you like shift clicked it? And if it has, which means it's cleared at least one, even though it doesn't actually, cl well, it does clear, but it, it stores it first, then it runs the directory. And it does the same thing if it finds a item that is on the ground. So if you click Q instead. So these two will run the directory. We'll get to that later. But first we want to look at the PND store function. Now this may seem like a lot of code, but it's fairly simple if we can break it down. First, we're detecting if the player is moving. So if you're holding the item, and then it's gonna run the function of move. I'm actually gonna quickly go over there. Now, at first, gonna remove the tag of move. Then, all this is doing is saying, hey, is the player rotating? And then subtracting that to check if it's a difference between the last tick of rotation, is the player moving? Then it does the same thing it just did. And if any of these are true, if they move slightly or if they rotate their head slightly, then it'll add the tag of move, which basically resets the page so it doesn't stay on the page that you currently are. So if you exit out, you don't come back to the same page you are. Then, if you're not holding the item, but you still have tag of PND, that means you were holding it last tick, which means there's still a PND menu nearby. Then it'll simply just kill that by sending it into the void. If you are moving and you do have the tag of PND, then it will reset it to page one and it will um, set the run the directory so it sets it back to the page. This just tells the directory what to do. Then, if you don't have the tag of PND, that means you didn't hold it last tick, but you are holding it now, it's going to summon the minecart, which is a pretty long command, so, because um, it has an item for like every slot and it has invisible minecart, so it's actually invisible as PND menu. Then, it's going to set the page to one, and then, I'm going to the next part, which is summing the menu. If you're holding the menu tablet, 
but there's no menu because you got away from it somehow by falling really fast or it got deleted somehow, some crazy way. Um, this will basically just summon it and it detects, hey, is there a minecart nearby? If not, then it'll summon a minecart nearby. Then this removes PND and then adds it. So you always have PND, and that's an amazing way that it it detects if you were holding it last tick just by having these in the reverse order instead of sandwiching everything in between them. Then the menu will constantly be teleported to the player, and if there's no um, player nearby that is holding an item, then it will just kill itself. See, not too terribly complicated. Lastly, we want to get on to the PND directory. Now, it doesn't look very complicated, but in like Final Frontier, there's like 30 lines of code, and that can be very um, intimidating. But at, at its basics, it's simply saying, hey, if it's page one, we're going to run fill one. If it's page two, we're going to fill two. This is a very simple menu and only has two pages, which makes it kind of easy to explain. So here we are in fill one. You can see PND fill one under general and recipes. And this is the same thing as our visualization was saying earlier. It's checking if there's filler 1B, adds the tag, summons the item, modifies that item based, based off of the slot. Then it's going to kill all of the unnecessary items that weren't modified. It's gonna clear all of the filler 1Bs. We're gonna skip this right now. I'll come back to it. It removes all the tags. Then it kills all the fillers on the ground. So if you click Q to throw it out, then this is a really important line. This sets it to be based off of what the page is. So the first page has those five items. So that's what this is right here. For PND fill two, it's a different line of code, even though it just looks like the same unknowable information. Then it removes the change tag. This is sort of not necessary, but it could come in handy if bugs arise. Then it sets the refill to zero, because remember in PND main, it had refill to one, so that just resets it easily there. Then if, this is another important line, if page does not equal one, then it's gonna rerun the directory. This is useful for, let's say, if you have a button, the potions button, that says page to two. Now this will actually refresh the page instead of having to wait for another event to occur. So now let's go here. These are all the clickables. So based off of where your item is in the actual menu system, this is replace one, this is replace 10, this is replace 19, and this is replace 27, based off of where it is, that's where you want to use the tag. So for this one, it is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This is 14, 16, 18, 12, 10. So then if we go back here, you can see 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 18. Now, how this works is it based off of the tag, it's going to run the command. So here, this will simply make them all fly up in the air a little bit due to the motion. That was the slime block. Then this one will summon a wither skeleton five blocks away. This one sets it to page two, which will open up the next page. This one kills all mobs. This one teleports you to zero, zero. It has to do it a couple times because it also has to kill the minecart. If we go to fill two, you can see just simple potion effects. Once you have the system down and you can just copy and paste, the only things you have to change are the clickables, the page number, and the actual contents of the page. Everything else just copy and pasted between every single one. So now to demonstrate how easy it is to add things to the this menu system, I'm going to add a speed effect to this part of the menu. Now, first step is getting MC Stacker ready. So here, let's go over here and let's grab a command block, just like this, and we want to open up MC Stacker here. We're gonna wanna give, 
And a nice thing you can do is you can grab um, commands you already have written down and just paste them in here, or paste them in the import area, and it makes it slightly easier. So here we can just add a simple, um, let's see, what does it say for here? Oh yeah, so speed for 10 seconds. So just do speed for 10 seconds. That's not how you spell seconds. Speed for 10 seconds. Let's give it a white. Let's do false for both of those. Let's click. Then we want this to be white dye. Actually, wait, no, let's do sugar. Sugar. Ah, crap. I have to redo it. It's very important not to mess it up or it will just erase everything. Speed for 10 seconds. Um, color white. And you'll also notice that this has the tag of filler 1B. And yeah, so we can just copy that. We now have speed for 10 seconds in sugar form. Now, one important thing that sometimes can be forgotten is you need to go to dot Minecraft. You need to go into your world safe, go into Minecraft, tags, items, and the menu.json. We want to add sugar because otherwise it will be not possible to actually detect clicking on it. So then simply open up the page you're trying to edit or duplicate and if you're trying to make another menu page and data pack disable that and you can do F3B to see where the minecart is. So then I grab this invisible little command block and I have speed for 10 seconds. You're going to want to open up your Visual Studio Code, and we're gonna take PND Fill, and we actually don't need to mess with this. All we need to do is copy this information and go right here to the items, paste, and you wanna just delete information here until you are at the items part, where you just delete all that and add a curly brace then we don't want to make this a clickable remember so we want to make replace 18 give speed and save then if i do slash data pack enable the tools right here should have speed for 10 seconds just like that it's that easy to change the menu now if you wanted to add Another page, it's basically the same thing, but you instead are creating another file and then changing the menu number and having clickable that leads to it. So instead, you have reg uh, um, regener regeneration lead to its own page, and you make sure that clickable sets it to a different page. Well, that's about it for today, folks. Please subscribe and comment and like. It really does help the channel out and helps me, you know, make videos like these. That's about it for today. Keep coding.